Why? Because I you guess you're looking at your now confidence walks. But you're on the ball of your toe, and you're going to practice walking. Heel high. You'll find people that can't bend their ankles, and they can't extend their ankles. They'll be locked here and stuck here. And people ask, well, we never get to that position when we sprint, but your body knows its range of motion. And the more range of motion that we have, the more comfortable it is and safer it is in between those extremes. We've just raised the ceiling for what we can do. Most explosive people on the planet? Wants to take a guess? Gymnasts? No. Ballet. Ballet. Watch the guys. The guys are freaks. They're here, and then all of a sudden they can just explode into a 30-inch jump off one foot. That's all that tension that they create in their bodies. And what do they do? What do they practice doing? They spend a lot of time in this position here. My right one's really off today. Once you get that down, this is a big change that I went through this summer. Now you're going to find the inside of that foot. So once you've got that ankle rocker down, now can I get my weight to the inside? And I'm picking up my, outs my pinky toe. That's winding the ankle. That's that coiling of the ankle, and we'll coil with the hip, which I'm going to show you a bunch of exercises with in a second. But that is the final step in your ankle rockers. Other things that they can do besides just practicing, and you can do this, I always tell my kids when your mom is yelling at you, do ankle rocker squats. Makes makes the pain go away. You don't get a car, all right, mom. I'm good, got this going on. You can do it anywhere, anytime. Going up the stairs. When you go up to press, push your knee toward the stair and drive up. Step up, press your knee toward the stair and step up. So they're constantly driving these good patterns into their body Instead of the 20 reps that we do at practice, now they're getting hundreds throughout the day. I don't like the term muscle memory, but I do like the idea of the neurons, you know, envelop, developing the sheaths to make movements more easy. Again, do you have isometric strength through the range of motion? Should we do this together for people who haven't done it? You're going to go up on the two feet. You're going to pick up one. Can you hold that for a minute? That's what you're looking to do. A minute. How many people have had Achilles problems? All of us old timers. Three of us. The rest of you are lying. <laughs> How many people are terrified of blowing that Achilles? If you would like to make sure that that does not happen, there's your answer. Most people who blow their Achilles do not have isometric strength through that ankle. And the tendon has to do way too much, and it rips. Knee straight, ankle extended. Standing in line. All right. It's a long way. Again, we are never there in a running world, but you need to find that range of motion, that strength of that range of motion. No different than a bicep curl. What if I just do this all the time with my bicep curl? <laughs> We know what that kid looks like, right? Jimmy, too much curls. No, I'm good coach. Look at that. <laughs> Knee bent, heel extended. That is a more useful position. And again, if you want to feel the difference, rotate your hip. Wind your hip through that position, and you'll feel muscles change. You'll feel other things come on. You have three joints there that are all moving in different ways. When you change all those different angles, it's going to have a huge impact on what you're using. Bent knee, heel bent, so now you're down low. Again, weights up, hopefully on the ball of your big toe. And then I go off the edge. Now I've got to pick up that outside. My pinky toe is going to come up. And I'm going to really strengthen that ability to get to the ball of my big toe. Airs that I see when they're doing this stuff. They have no anterior tilt when they're doing it. They are still here. That coach, I got it. But now, curl that up. And then hold. 
and all of a sudden you get a whole bunch of ab turning in. I want to grab my, my big toe to grab a little bit. Keeping the ball on the ground and grab. It shortens, actually shortens the arch of the foot. <clears throat> Gonna load and then hold. You're pulling the chain, pulling from both sides of the chain again. I'm coiling that ankle and then coiling that hip. Instead of just standing there with their butt sticking out the side. So we want to get that whole system to be one big piece. Another common error. The crossover. I know I've talked about crossover before. If you're filming from the front, if this foot is drifting to the other side of the body, measure from the back of the heel, draw a line up. If it's on the wrong side of the body, they're slow. They have to use their arms to compensate. But we have exercises for you. Hip heights. This is my other favorite take-home exercise. This is the exercise. This has got so much good stuff in it. To me, it's, it's the king. Now, you can use a Swiss ball for instability, or you can use it for balance. So what she is doing is, the ball's against the wall. It's on her hip. She's standing on her outside foot. And just to start, your very beginning movement is, can I tip my hip up? Errors are you're moving away from the wall. I'm driving the ball through the wall. And my hip is coming up. From there, we can add an ankle rocker. So now we're teaching our ankle to move with our hip. Then we're going to drive up under our big toe. So you can actually redesign, the, you can rebuild the entire gait cycle perfectly with instability, so every set is different, so you learn to find that position. And if we look at her finished position, this is where we want to be, right? Knee is underneath the butt, this knee is up. If we want to weight her down, we can put a rubber band over her near shoulder, her shoulder near the wall, and she can drive through that. So there's all of your variations. Start with the hip tip, then you're going to bend the knee, and then you're going to drive up to your big toe. You don't even need a swiss ball, you can buy a beach ball, and it works just as well. You can wind, learn to wind your shoulder, bring your arm up over your head, and really put pressure on it. But that's not it enough, we got more. Because it is a hip exercise, I forgot, I typo there. It should be foot in, foot neutral, foot out. If I turn my foot out, that is a different head of my glute med. So if my toe is pointing, if my right leg is pointing at 2 o'clock, that is one of my glute med heads. If I go neutral, it's my middle one. If I go in to 11 o'clock, it's my anterior head. All three need to fire in a sequence to help rotate your foot around to get to your big toe. Because when we run, there's a twisting torsion where bones are twisting at both sides. So we want to do our hip hikes with our foot out. And you will find people who hit the ground and they cross over a lot, that foot coming out is horrible. You can do them with your foot turned in. These are people that don't have great hip <coughs> lift when they run, because when they go to press off that big toe and they're ro rotating in, their hip gives here. So we want through the entire gait cycle to hold that hip in place. So I have them do 10 with your foot out, 10 with your foot in, and 10 with your foot, you know, middle and then in. So I'm hitting all three heads. If I want to make it the complete cycle, this is very advanced, it's kind of like the idiot standing on the ball with a bar over his head. You know those spinners? We'll stand on the spinner and you're going to rotate that foot when you come up. So as you're lifting your hip up, you're rotating that foot up. 
which is a bigger picture of what's actually happening, but we're getting the whole range of motion through. That is a great exercise. Anyone can do it at home. You can get two spinners for 50 bucks at Amazon. They come in a double package. I always lend all mine out, so I only have one right now. I'd like the other one back. Any questions on hips and feet?